New studio calls for a new performance test. We know you all love to see it as our first two chipset comparisons were quite popular. Give a warm welcome to the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, the Tensor 2 and the A16 Bionic. They will be joined by the Dimensity 9000, the Kirin 9000 and the Exynos 2200 which are the newest chipsets of these respective companies and we'll keep updating these videos as they come out. This video is also sponsored by Squarespace. Let the facts speak. For those who haven't watched our previous video, this right here is a timer. It helps you keep track of how long each phone is taking to finish a task. We also check out the temperature of the devices as they're running at full speed and you can see them here. The last thing is how well the chipsets are optimized for multiple apps, ergo the battery. Now that you're aware of where you need to look to understand what, we can kick off our tests right after I tell you that we take 10 minute breaks between each task to give the phone some space to breathe. Adobe Lightroom is going to be our first task. It's been really useful for us in our work, so we want to go over the top here by first applying a preset to 50 JPEG and 50 RAW files. It looks like quite the close competition here, but the winner is going to be the one you least expected, the Exynos 2200 in 17 seconds. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is a super close second at 20 seconds, with the Tensor 2 taking the bronze medal at just over half a minute. The Dimensity 9000 is up next at 37 seconds, and the A16 Bionic is actually 5th at 39 seconds. The Kirin 9000 has struggled a bit with this, and will end 6th place at exactly 1 minute. You can also take a look at the chart that we prepare for you at the end of every test if the results are passing by too quickly for you to take notes and shape it up in your head. That was a pretty hectic start and I'm positive that we've gotten you excited for the rest. If you are, a quick like and a sub would really help us out guys. So presets are applied and the phones are waiting with their feet on the pedals. Time to render. You can see the temperature slowly start to creep up and up and up and I've always wondered if our extreme test would cause any of the phones to overheat and crash, but thankfully this hasn't happened. Yet. I'm on my toes watching this race like it's Formula 1 baby, but what is this? One of the phones is breaking away from the others and I wonder if you can see it as well. Of course you can, as the newest creation of Snapdragon, the upgrade to the 8 Gen 1, the 8 Plus Gen 1 will take first place with only 7 minutes and 2 seconds required. It actually surpasses the ever so powerful A16 Bionic who will come in second at 7 minutes and 47 seconds. Rounding out the top 3 will be the Dimensity 9000 at 8 minutes and 20 seconds, followed by the Exynos 2200 at just over 9 minutes. Google's Tensor 2 is 5th here by rendering half a minute slower than the Samsung's Exynos as the Kirin 9000 is gonna be taking quite a while longer, but we'll eventually get there at 16 minutes and 52 seconds. That was a pretty nice test to finish up Lightroom, and it's kinda crazy how Kirin actually took almost 17 minutes to finish. Nevertheless, here are the final results once again. While the phones take a couple of minutes to cool down, let me tell you about Squarespace. It's a very efficient company that provides software as a service for website building and hosting. You're able to use pre-built website templates and also drag and drop elements to create and modify web pages, which is the perfect solution for many who don't have the necessary knowledge to make their own website. All you have to do is go to Squarespace, click on Get Started, choose a template, and the rest is fairly simple. The prices are very affordable for just about anyone wanting to create their own personal space, so check out squarespace.com slash versus in the description below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Well, I'm sure that many of you expected the A16 Bionic to pop off immediately at the start of these tests. Personally, I had the same feeling, but I like these results. Come on, Snapdragon. Now that we're done with Lightroom, we can move on to another Adobe application that is also one of my favorites, Adobe Rush. What can you do with Rush, you ask? Well, the answer is fairly simple. You can edit videos on your phone in quite a simple way. What we want to do with this app is to create a timeline with a 4K video, which will be just over one minute. We're also going to be using some B-roll that we have stored from some of our previous videos, and then it will be time to include some graphics animations into the mix. However, it seems like there are still issues with the Exynos chipset with regards to this app as it crashes and leaves us hanging. Shortly after this happened, the race between Bionic and Snapdragon reaches a conclusion as the former will land first place by finishing the task in 53 seconds. The latter in this case will take second place by coming in at 1 minute and 33 seconds with the 
Intensity wasting no time by finishing 6 seconds after Snapdragon. Tensor is not too far behind and takes care of things in 1 minute and 55 seconds, while Kirin... Well, Kirin really struggled on this one, but it's understandable as it's an older chip. It completes the task in 5 minutes and 21 seconds, which could be because of incompatibility with Adobe apps, but we'll figure that out later on as we do more and more tests, and trust me when I say that we will keep them coming as we take a step into Microsoft territory with Excel. Now this won't only have something to do with the processor, but it does play a part, and in general, can be seen as testing performance. 60,000 lines are present in this Excel file, and we're seeing the results coming in super fast with Bionic readying the file for editing in just 8 seconds. Tensor gets there in 13, Snapdragon in 14, Dimensity in 16, Kirin in 19, and Exynos in 21 seconds. All the phones managed to lock this down in a short amount of time, and it just shows you how much companies have been able to stack computation in these small things over the years. After disposing of two instances of Lightroom, Rush, and Excel, let's just give you what you want. Benchmarks, baby! Geekbench will be first on the list. What is Geekbench? Nah, none of you are going to be asking that question. It tests functionality of devices along with benchmarking the CPU by modeling your real world usage. One of my favorite things about Geekbench is that it gives you the single core and multi core score separately. You can run multiple processes at the same time with these multi cores and in turn make it easier to multitask and run more than one app at once. Single core scores have arrived once again, the A16 Bionic takes the cake followed by the 8 Plus Gen 1, the Tensor 2, Kirin, Dimensity, and lastly Exynos. Looking at the multi-core scores, I see that Exynos has actually jumped into third place, with Tensor sliding into fourth. Kirin taking last place will be the main difference between the two core tests. By the way, we will be acquiring both versions of the S23 when it comes out, and I am expecting way better results from Exynos. Meanwhile, Antutu is up next. Small but important information, Antutu is incompatible on Android and iOS, due to the kernel and development language being different. Nevertheless, that's not going to stop us from doing these tests and allowing you to use this information as you please. That being said, I'm glad we had this test on our list because Snapdragon actually manages to reach over a million points here with their powerhouse chipset. Bionic is second as Dimensity rounds out the top three. Exynos, Tensor, and Kirin will take the respective places at fourth, fifth, and sixth. By the way, Feel free to interrupt and comment on anything you feel is interesting regarding any of these tests or the phones in the comment section below. Next up is Geekbench ML, a new addition to the Geekbench squad. It basically measures your mobile device's machine learning performance and it can also help you understand whether your device is ready to run the latest machine learning applications. Artificial intelligence is becoming more and more widespread in pretty much every tech community out there and soon it will take over the world. No, not yet? Okay. Running through these tasks at full speed will be the A16 Bionic also being the only one to get over a thousand points. Its closest competition wasn't even able to achieve half the score as Snapdragon takes the silver medal. Exynos, Tensor, Dimensity and Kirin will be fairly close to each other in points. Do note that the more you use a new generation phone, the higher possibility of a better result with things related to AI because your phone needs time to learn. Let's keep it going full speed ahead. 3D Mark helps you relate your score to real world game performance by estimating the frame rates you can expect in a selection of popular games. I think this is super useful because compared to 10 and 15 years ago, a lot of people are gaming on mobile phones now. Higher points equal better results as always, and to make this a test about flagships, we're obviously going to be choosing the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test once again. Temperatures are rising a little and I'm not trying to be funny or anything, but this really is one of the most extreme tests on the list. Heat isn't the biggest problem anymore in mobile devices, as companies have found more ways than one to be able to keep the temperature down while their products are working. What actually intrigues me is that finding out if the ones heating up just work faster and better, or is it because they don't have the best optimization and have to work more to output the same result? 3D Mark puts the phones through 20 loops and tells us the best and worst result for each phone, which is much appreciated. This also lets us see how consistent the results are when we look at all the loops together. 
For the best loop, the A16 Bionic is at over 3000 points, with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 also doing a super good job by getting 2800 points. The rest were not as close this time, but the Dimensity 9000 still manages to take third, and I like the stable performance it's shown throughout this competition. The Exynos 2200, the Tensor 2, and the Kirin 9000 follow the top 3 in the standings. For the lowest loop, the differences will be Exynos sliding into 3rd place, Tensor sliding into 4th, and Dimensity dropping down to 5th place. This will be the end of 3D Mark for now, and hang in there as we are almost done with the biggest performance comparison on YouTube, with our last test being a browser test. BaseMark 3.0 is the name of the game and is responsible for testing how well your mobile device can use web-based applications. There are some system and graphic tests involved, which can tell you a lot if your phone starts lagging or freezing. In our previous comparison, the A15 Bionic had doubled the score of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but it looks like the A16 has actually decided to triple it this time. The 8 Gen 2 better come out quickly to keep the competition going, but for now, the 8 Plus Gen 1 will barely overtake the Tensor 2 for the silver medal, as Dimensity, Kirin and Exynos will give us our final results. It is a pleasing sight though to see the battery levels of the phones being very close to each other, as it shows that even though the test results vary, the this isn't true for the batteries, and even if your phone does something slower, it still won't drop all the way down to 50 or 60% just for running some tests or rendering some videos. All things considered, Exynos takes a Lightroom preset, while Snapdragon takes a Lightroom render. Out of nowhere, Bionic goes on a roll and takes Rush, Excel, and both the single and multi-core tests of Geekbench. And Tutu went to Snapdragon, as Bionic once again took Geekbench ML, best and worst loops of 3D Mark, as well the browser test. Snapdragon was able to utilize the battery of the device the best, but it's good to remember just how close the battery results were. As always, the effort we put into these videos is off the charts, so if you enjoyed this experience, it would be great if you could hit those like and subscribe buttons to help us fight the algorithm. Thanks in advance guys, and I'll see you soon.